Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 we're going to get this model working. This is the Furby Nebula 215 and actually this already works, I've already reviewed it. Did you see the flight review? If not, click up in the corner and you can see that or there's also down in the description. This model took a lot of work to get going. There were a couple issues with this model right from the factory. One, the voltage in the OSD doesn't work. You get the wrong number. They hooked the VBAT up to the wrong place. So I'm gonna go through the details on how to get that working. They also didn't put any config at all on the flight controller and the ESCs have a really old load on them. So I'm gonna go through all the details. So if you get one of these, this should help you get the whole thing set up and working because once you do, it's a really nice model. And at the moment, it's $99. It has some really steep competition right now, under $120. There's details on that down in the description. But there's just something magical about that sub $100 drone. So if you don't have one of these, stop watching and go watch the review. That would be a much better option. But if you bought one of these, stick around, follow through, and we'll help you get this thing in the air. Okay, I've got the first layer of the top off. In case you have to do this, I'm gonna show you what I did. I actually took the screws out from the bottom so I could get this whole plate off in one piece. These screws were actually held in there too tight and I used a 564 English wrench. The metric didn't fit as well, so I'm not sure exactly what size that was, but this one fit and was nice and long and those were in super tight, probably too tight. But I will say, at least they didn't strip, which has uh, commonly been a problem. So there we can see the XM on top and the VTX here. I'll go ahead and take the antenna connector off here so I can get more stuff out of the way. Then we'll take the props off. That sounds like a good idea. So here's our typical Omnibus F4 flight controller we see in lots of things. We have the LED hookups here. We have the PWM outputs. Yeah, we have the S-Bus receiver hookup here. On the bottom, we have the OSD hookups and the hookups for the camera power. What we want to do is see where the VBAT connections here go to on the power distribution board. So we have the voltage in. On this side, we've got two five volt pads and what, I can't read what's on that one. There you can see that is a 12 volt pad right there. So that's not going to work. That's not going to let us ever see the voltage on the OSD. Now on the QAV220 that I had, those pads weren't connected at all. They weren't wrong, they were just not hooked up at all. So here we just need to move those somewhere. Okay, I've got everything spaced out to make sure nothing's touching so there's no contact. I do have my smoke stopper here. Uh, here's the bulb, you can keep an eye on that. So we'll turn this on and see what happens. That looks okay. There we go, got my multimeter out here. So what I wanna do is check these pads to the side and see very carefully. There we go, that is the true voltage. So all I've got to do is move those wires over to that pad and I'll be able to read the voltage properly. Okay, first I'm gonna remove the wires that are already there. As is often the case, this is far easier to do without a camera right in your face. There we go. So it actually left most of the solder on there but that's not that big of a deal. Ooh, except I've got some it might be touching that other pad. I'm gonna grab a knife and scrape that off just to make sure it's not actually shorting. There we go, just kind of popped off. That might have been a problem, might not have. And even though these are both positive pads, this is a 12 volt regulator and that is battery voltage, so that still would have been a problem if those were shorting out. This is one place where it's handy to be a little ambidextrous, but I wanna tin this pad. Come on. And the other one here. There we go. Don't need to tin up the whole pad in this case. Just need to get it so there's enough room for the wire to stick. Now these wires will not have any amps going through them. So it really doesn't have to be an amazing job here. It just needs to be able to read the voltage through. Anything that amps are going to be passing through, I want to make sure the wire is actually in contact with the copper. I don't want it to be going through the solder, but in this case, it doesn't matter all that much. That's not really that pretty, but it will function, which is what I'm after right now. There we make sure that the uh, there are no wires stuck in here in between the plates. Make sure I can screw it down all the way. That looks like it'll be just fine. 
I've actually never seen these before. It's kind of weird. Usually there's a thread on one side and a hole on the other. And in this case, it's uh, just a screw hole on both sides. It's basically a nut, it's just a big nut. And it goes on, but it is nylon here. So it will go on and then that's why these screws were used on the top of it. I kind of like that. Instead of having the nuts on the top, you have screws on the top. Alrighty, the stack is back together. I think that'll work. We'll get everything reconnected here. Trick here is just to go slow. Make sure you're not snagging a wire, which is really easy to do. I had a hold of the back ones there. Now that's clear. The back has popped in place. Wires are clear there. They look okay there. I think that's all back in place now. And that looks good. Except it doesn't. See? See what I did there? Look at that. I've got to fix that before. But bolt everything down. And the same thing here when you put this on. Just make sure you don't snag and tear and push any wires. There, see that one doesn't fit. It will fit. You just have to be patient. There we go. That looks good. And moving that one on that side, it really should be on the inside, I think, but I don't want to take the whole stack apart, so I'm going to be lazy and do that. It should be fine, right? Famous last words. I'm going to torque these down, but not ridiculously hard like they did before. Now, this is important. Do not power it on until you attach the antenna. You'll notice I didn't have the antenna attached earlier when I plugged it in, but I didn't have the VTX attached either, so it doesn't really matter at that point. But now it does. Oh, you know what I should... I definitely should have bound this before I put the top on. If you, when you take the top off, bind the receiver before you test it, but we'll keep going for now. So there you go, 15.2 volts. That looks good, that's what we're after. Now we can move on to the next step. Got the model set up on my radio real quick. I'll just go through and show you what I've done. I've got it set up. I've got it set up with a name. I will bind it here in a minute. It's D16 because it's an XM. I've set it to one through eight because that's the only channels that I really need in this case. And the receiver is actually faster this way. If you go up and have more channels, see it's 18 milliseconds versus nine milliseconds. Um, I have set the fail safe to no pulses. Then on inputs, I've set up four channels, S, A, S, E, S, C, S, D. And then I added those on the mixer. So that will be arm modes, buzzer, and flip over after crash, AKA turtle mode. If you want to see the full setup for that, let me know and I'll point you to a video where I do that setup over and over and over in my videos. I've got my smoke stopper set and ready to go again since I opened it up so I can get to my receiver. This is one th place where it's great because I have it on a switch with my smoke stopper. If you don't have a smoke stopper, make one. I've got a video that should be linked in the corner right now unless I forget on how to do that. There we go. So there it's green and red. So then, there we go, it's bound. And the light's green. So while I'm at it here, I'm also gonna check the button here. I'm on C1, C2. So there I want it on, there's pit mode. Okay, let's take a look at OBS and do we have no configuration whatsoever? We sure don't, really, not even a little bit. All right, so we will guess, well, let's see. It depends on which version this is. It could be UART 1 or UART 6. I think this one's gonna be 6. If not, you won't hear this. Save and reboot. And then I'll go to configuration set it to serial based in this case I want S bus save and reboot so now we'll go to receiver and see if we see anything so while I'm here just to fix this I will be on TAER there we go save that okay so I am set right but here I've run into a bug but here I'll switch my mode switch and there that's aux 2 and we're waiting and we're we're waiting we're still waiting so if you run into this problem I actually have a video for it that I'll link up in the corner on how to fix it but here I'll show you real fast since we're here go under the radio and this that I was just talking about the channel 1 through 8 because it's better well in this case it's not switch it to 16 and now look things work now I flip the switch and it actually works 
my modes move around, my sticks move around, it actually works properly. So I don't know what it is, I don't know what the bug is. If you update the receiver, it doesn't fix it. I've run into this multiple times, but just changing it to D16 works for this. It should work with D8, with the XM Plus it works great, but that's for another video. We're not gonna worry about that for right now. Now we know that part is good. Okay, I just looked down and noticed this is running Betaflight 317. So we're gonna go to the CLI and double check to see what this is. Version is an Omnibus F4 SD 317. Yeah, 317 was great a year ago. It was amazing. I'm not gonna fly it now. Disconnect. I guess we're going the full thing on this. So this is an Omnibus F4 SD 33 is out now. Why not? Download. Flash firmware. There we go. It took me two tries to do it. I'm not sure why. It just kind of sat there the first time. I just rebooted it and it seems fine now. And this is one reason I leave that sticker on the buzzer until I'm ready to fly because it's a little loud now, but not crazy. Okay, so I just loaded 3.3, but I'm going to pretend it's 3.2. Okay, after that flash, I could tell the level was not even close to right, so I'm going to hold it close-ish. I should take this battery strap out. If you have time, take the battery strap out and just lay it totally flat, but this will get it uh, better. Yeah, I can just tell that's closer. So now we're back to it. Resetting UART 6, save and reboot. Now, yes, I just put 3.3 on this, but I'm going to pretend it's 3.2 until I get more setups. This is not going to be a 3.3 setup video. So there I've got D-Shot 600 motor stop on because that will only activate on takeoff and landing, which is really nice. I do not need a barometer or a magnetometer. Oh, here we go. The arming is now available. So I'm going to just make that 180 so I can arm at whatever angle I want to. Craft name is a Furby Nebula. It's S bus. I do want an OSD. I don't enable air mode here. I do enable anti gravity and dynamic filters. That's why we had to upgrade. Oh, D shot beacon. I'm not going to enable that because I have an actual buzzer on here. Power is going to default too high, so we'll turn that down. Save that. PID tuning. I'm going to go ahead and just pretend, like I said, this is 3 2. Do the 3 2 dynamic filters, PT1, and disable all the filters. Receiver, I need to set back again to TAER. That looks good. And it looks good. Modes now, I want to only arm on aux 1. I want angle at the top of aux 2. I want horizon at the angle of, or in the middle of aux 2. I want beeper at the bottom of aux 3. This is where I enable air mode on aux 2 so it will take effect for horizon and angle mode. Then flip over after crash down here. Motors will come back to OSD. I like the crosshairs, my timers, my fly mode, my craft name. So when I'm reviewing the video, because I don't want it there, I know which one it is. <laughs> I apparently spelled it wrong. Warnings and average cell voltage. There we go. There's everything arranged fairly well. That'll get me in the air. Save. So everything else is set up now. Now let's check the motors and see what happens. Notice props are off. Connect the battery, turn it on. So I press three times to change the power. I'm actually gonna turn this down to pit mode for now. So I don't burn up the VTX. Since I do, am applying power now. So I understand. Let's see if this even works. Yeah, I'm not sure these are gonna be compatible with D-Shot. That's unfortunate. Go back to configuration and try multi shot. Yep, multi shot's fine. So, because I might have to be on multi shot, I'll turn that off, turn that up all the way, apply power again, and move it down.
So that'll calibrate them. And now that looks much better. Much, much better. Yeah, that was gonna be a problem if I didn't calibrate them. So if you do use multi-shot, you have to remember you actually have to calibrate these things. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I, one thing I wanna do though is take a look at BL Heli and see if I can update that to make these work with D-Shot, because that would be better. Okay, so I've got BL Heli here, COM18, connect, read setup. That looks good. Oh, these 16.3. Now that looks much better. Okay, back in beta flight. Man, this is a big video. Change it back to D-Shot 600. Save and reboot. Nope, they still are not happy. Nope, not gonna happen. Not with that at least. So multi-shot it is. Okay, but that gets everything ready. Now we can put it back together. Before I do that, I... I am going to reset my VTX again. So one, two, three, turn my power to high. Now everything that I said about putting it together before is still true. Okay, did you get all that? One of the things I didn't show in this video is I did not use the stock props. I replaced them with Dow Cyclones. There's a link for those down below because those stock props are terrible. But this thing was great. These are the 5045s and I was really, really happy. It'd probably be fine with the 5046s also. In one of the flights, I broke the antenna that it came with. I actually got really, really good video out of the stock antenna that it came with, but it snapped off. Where'd it go? I had to run here somewhere. Yeah, there it is, that's all that's left. It snapped right off when I hit a tree, so that was not good. But yeah, once you get this working, all the internal components are pretty well protected, so I do like that. Just takes a little more work than I would like. If you didn't watch my review video and it's still March of 2018, make sure you go check that out because I'm actually gonna be giving this model away. I'm giving two of them away, in fact, so I will cover all the details in that video, but if it's still recent, go watch that because you might be able to win this. So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below and let me know if you have this model, if you like this model and you want D-Shot on it. Because if it had D-Shot, that's really the only thing I don't like about it in the long run. Everything else is easily fixed, but D-Shot is a problem. And I think Furby's $5 ESCs right now would go on here just fine and take care of that problem. I'm pretty sure they support it. So it'd be 20 bucks to get it all working. D-Shot for 20 bucks, is it worth it? Let me know. So until next time, remember, I need to order some green props because it would go better with the purple.